One of the most striking features of our church is the large cross that hangs above the altar here. As soon as you come into the church, you notice it, and of course you can't miss it if you're watching it on the live stream. It's a copy of the cross that hung in the church of San Damiano, just outside the city walls of Assisi, back at the beginning of the 13th century, when a young man came into the church to pray. We know him as St. Francis. As Francis prayed in front of this cross, he heard Jesus speak to him. Francis, rebuild my church, which, as you can see, is falling into ruin. The young man could see that the church around him was in a poor state, and soon set about the work of repairing the building. But as he went on to discover, Jesus was not speaking of the church building, but of the universal church, so much in need of new life, energy and holiness. Francis would be instrumental in God's plan to rebuild and renew the faith of the people. The San Damiano Cross is one of the most famous representations of Christ crucified in the world. Uh, it's particularly found in Franciscan churches and communities, but many people have them in their homes as well. In many other places we see this beautiful cross. It's attractive, both for its beauty and for its history, but it's also packed with symbolism. So let's take a closer look. The figure of Jesus dominates the cross. He's not only central, he's much larger than the other figures, and his whole body seems to radiate light. The colours red and gold surround him, red as a symbol of divinity, gold of eternity. Jesus is truly God and lives forever. During Francis's lifetime, there will be a move towards more realistic human representations of Jesus. Francis himself emphasised the humanity of Jesus in his promotion of the crib scene, and artists began to depict more clearly the terrible suffering of Jesus on the cross. Jesus is both human and divine. The garment our Lord is wearing here is more than a simple loincloth. It looks almost priestly. It's a sign that Jesus, truly God and truly human, is the priest, the mediator, between heaven and earth. The whole cross is like a visual representation of St John's account of the Passion, which emphasises again and again that Jesus is truly God, even as he died on the cross. Above our Lord, we have the words St John tells us were written by Pontius Pilate, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. And surrounding Jesus, the smaller figures, who, St John recalls, stood around the cross as our Lord died. On the left of the cross, as we look at it, so on our Lord's right, are Mary and St John, the beloved disciple. Blood drips from the wound on Christ's right side onto him. It's a sign of his cleansing blood being poured out on all the disciples of Jesus to grant us forgiveness. Mary's hand is raised to her chin, a sign which shows her wonder at the mystery before her. Mary looks at the beloved disciple. She is fulfilling her role as mother of the church. Both she and St John point towards the Lord on the cross. On the other side, we see Mary Magdalene, also with that same gesture of wonder. Mary was the first witness to the resurrection. Is she amazed here by the mystery of the cross, or at the mystery of the empty tomb? Next to her is Mary the wife of Clopas, and a centurion. Many scholars identify him with the centurion whose son was healed by Jesus at Capernaum. In this case, the small head behind him could represent the child. Others say he is the centurion who saw Jesus die and said, In truth, this man was God's son. In this case, the small head may represent the artist, or perhaps those who watched our Lord die from afar. The centurion's right hand has three fingers raised in a typical sign of profession of faith. Two smaller figures are also represented in these panels. On the left, the soldier who pierced Jesus' side with a spear, tradition calls him Longinus. The figure on the right is thought to be the one who offered Jesus a sponge soaked in vinegar, tradition calls him Stephaton. The blood from the wounds on the Lord's hands flows along his arms and drips over them. And by the left calf of Jesus we see a rooster, perhaps a sign of Peter's denial, or simply a hint at the dawn of a new day, as Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, there are many signs of the resurrection in this icon. Behind the arms of Jesus is a wide black rectangle, which may represent the empty tomb. At the sides are two figures, possibly the women who discovered the tomb, or maybe Peter and John. There are also angels in attendance here. At our Lord's feet, there is another area painted black. This may represent Sheol, the underworld to which Jesus descended after he died, to rescue all those from earlier generations who were held captive by death. Some say the small figures at the very foot of the cross represent the holy people of the Old Testament who were saved by Christ. 
At the top of the cross, we see Jesus again. Here, surrounded by a red circle representing his divinity, he is seen ascending into heaven, carrying a standard of victory over death. Around him, the angels gaze in wonder, and almost seem to be talking to each other about what is happening. It's the most animated scene of the whole icon. Above the Lord is seen the hand of God the Father, in a semicircle of identical style and colour to the circle which contains Jesus. And in the finger of God, perhaps we see a sign of the Holy Spirit, sometimes called the finger of God's right hand. Returning to the central figure of Jesus, we see that his eyes are disproportionately large. Some people see in them a hint of sadness, a sign of his love for us, and his sorrow at our sin. But his eyes, open wide, also show us that he's very much alive, and his head does not hang to one side, he's not dead. We see here Jesus, risen and glorified by the Father. The cross, as St John points out to us in the Gospel, is the hour of the glory of Christ. And so this icon shows us Christ, crucified and yet risen. Christ who descended to hell and yet ascended to heaven. He is the bridge between heaven and earth, between death and life. The array of figures around the cross is an invitation to us all to take our part in the Paschal Mystery. Everyone is called to participate, and everyone can benefit from this sacrifice. These figures also remind us of our communion with one another, sealed in the blood of Christ. By his death, he draws us together as one body. The whole cross seems to visually represent these words from the letter to the Hebrews. With so many witnesses and a great cloud on every side of us, we too then should throw off everything that hinders us, especially the sin that clings so easily, and keep running steadily in the race we have started. Let us not lose sight of Jesus, who leads us in our faith and brings it to perfection. For the sake of the joy which was still in the future, he endured the cross, disregarding the shamefulness of it, and from now on has taken his place at the right of God's throne. St. Clair tells us that Francis left his encounter with Jesus at the Church of San Damiano totally filled with divine consolation. And she also tells us that Francis foresaw the important role that San Damiano would play in the early life of the Franciscan movement. She uh, writes to us in her testament about a prophecy that Francis made. This holy man, in the great joy and enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, made a prophecy about us, which the Lord fulfilled later. Climbing the wall of that church, he shouted in French to some poor people who were standing nearby, Come and help me build the monastery of San Damiano, because ladies will dwell here who will glorify our Heavenly Father throughout his holy church by their celebrated and holy manner of life. Well, of course, that's exactly what happened. Claire and the First Sisters who were with her moved into the convent at San Damiano in around about the year 1212. And Claire spent the rest of her earthly life there, some 41 years. Imagine how many hours she must have spent praying in front of the original cross which had spoken to St Francis. After Claire died, the sisters moved up the hill uh, into the city walls of Assisi four years or so after Claire left this earth. And they took Claire's body with them and they also took with them the cross which had spoken to St Francis and it remains there to this day. Uh, these days you can go and look and visit the place and pray in, in front of that very cross which spoke to St Francis all those years ago. In 2019, when we had our parish pilgrimage to Assisi, I had the great joy, the immense privilege, really, of celebrating Mass beneath that cross, just as I do beneath its copy here every day in our own church. The Most High and Glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart. Give me right faith certain hope, perfect love, and deep humility. O Lord, give me sense and discernment in order to carry out your true and holy will. Amen.